Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for School of Motion. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use pyro to generate ice around text and other 3D objects. So let's get to it. So here I am in Cinema 4D with a really basic setup. I've got some lights, I've got a backdrop primitive, I've got some text, and I'm going to use the text to generate the ice. And it's really going to be pyro as ice, as we've talked about. So let's select my text and choose tags, and then go simulation tags and head over to pyro emitter. And once I do that, making sure I'm on the first frame, I'm going to run that simulation. And I can see that I've got fire coming out of my text. Now you won't see anything updating here in the Redshift IPR or whatever renderer you're using because Pyro doesn't render here by default. Next, let's make some changes to this Pyro just to get started. I really only want to use the fire to generate the ice and not the density, not the smoke. So I'm going to go over to my Pyro here and under Object, I'm going to turn off density and I'm going to turn off velocity. Then I'll make sure that my temperature is set to on, which will give us the fire only for creating geometry. Now it's not gonna look any different, but I'm gonna rerun the simulation anyway, just so that it's generating properly. So we'll let it go and stop somewhere around 33, 35, something like that. Okay, good. Okay, so now it's time to turn this into geometry. So I'm gonna go right here and click on volume measure. And I'm gonna take my pyro output, which is a volume, and I'm gonna drop it into the volume measure. And we can see that it's now generating geometry that looks a little bit like snow, maybe just because of the material, but it's really like fire. It's actually moving, animating up. But we're gonna make some changes to that. So let's do this. Let's go into our browser, right? And so this is the browser that comes with Cinema 4D. If you click on it, it'll probably open on the side here. Mine is uh, set up to be down here. And in that browser, you'll find under materials, there's a glass section and I'm gonna grab the frosted glass and I'm gonna apply that to my volume measure. And now we're getting something that looks a lot more like ice. Now the thing about it is that ice tends to create icicles that come down. So we wanna make some changes to the pyro. So what I'll do is selecting my pyro output right here. I'm gonna go into pyro scene and we'll head over to pyro where it says density buoyancy and temperature buoyancy. I'm going to set the temperature buoyancy to a negative number. We'll keep it the same. We'll just set it to a negative number. And then we're going to hit play again. And we can see the fire is going down. And go a little more like that. And now we've got like these little icicles coming off of it. But one thing that I can see is that I think that too much of the actual text is still exposed and the ice isn't very thick. So what I'll do is I'll select my text pyro tag right here and I'll set the surface thickness to, let's start with 20 and see how that goes. And I'll hit play. It's definitely better. Probably go just a little bit more to close up some of those holes. Maybe even go to 25 and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's definitely looking better. Already this is looking really good. And if you were happy with this, that's cool. Go with that. So this is pretty nice. But there's a little more that I think we can do to make it look even a little more detailed. And one of those things is we can select our pyro output and set the voxel size to 2.5, which makes the voxel smaller. So there's gonna be more detail. Let's see what that looks like. And that's looking really cool actually. So if you wanted to add more detail to your ice, you could definitely play with the voxel size. Another thing to look at is the volume measure itself. And you can play with the threshold here to get different effects. So if you wanted it to be longer, you lower the threshold, everything gets bigger, the icicles come down further, or you could bring it really tight by bringing up the threshold even more, and this would create little teeny bits of ice or whatever around it. So that's another way to deal with that. I'm just gonna set this back to its default. Anyway, from here, if you found your frame that you like, you've played it through and you found this great frame and you wanna lock this in, select your volume measure and hit C and that will turn it into an editable mesh. So if we twirl it down, we no longer have the pyro here. It's actually just geometry. And at this point, I would tell you to just either delete this tag right here or just deactivate it. But either way, once that's gone, you won't have the pyro showing up in there complicating things and you've got this block of ice around your text or whatever object you're using. Oh, and one last tip, something worth pointing out. The index of refraction for ice is different than that of glass. So the refractive index of ice, according to Google, is 1.31. I don't think it's exactly right. I've seen other numbers, but 1.3 something is pretty close. So let's come back over to our glass material over here. I'm just going to double click on it. And I'm going to go down to where it says reflection. And under that IOR, I'm going to change that to 1.31. And watch what happens to the material. 
it becomes a lot more clear and the refraction changes a bit and that looks a lot more like ice to me. Okay, one last, last tip. I just forgot this and I thought it would be really important for you to know. If you want to have your ice trail be even longer, we should select the pyro output, go to pyro scene and under pyro right here, we'll go down and we'll head over to the relative temperature dissipation because that's how fast the fire will dissipate. Right now it's set to 7%, which is the default. Let's set this to something lower, like let's say 3%, and then let's start the simulation over. So if we watch it now, we can see we're getting a longer trail. Psst. Hey buddy, before I disappear here, do you want to take your 3D skills to the next level? Well, School of Motion has a lot of great courses to help you do that. In fact, they just released a new course from Jonathan Winbush on Unreal Engine for 3D artists, and I'm going to be taking it myself. So check it out. As always, I hope this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Ron Rabinowitz for School of Motion. I'll see you soon.